give me a reason why I'm doing this. Why is this significant for me? Because personally, I'm not terribly extrinsically driven individual. If I don't have that intrinsic drive that this matters to me for a reason, then every goal in the world is not going to make a difference. Hello and welcome to Doc Working, the Whole Physician Podcast. I'm Jill Farmer, one of the life coaches at Doc Working, and I am joined by one of our other co-lead coaches, Gabriella Dennery, MD. And today we are going to be talking about goals versus intentions. And some of you are like, wait, what do you mean versus? What's the difference between a goal and an intention? And why should I care what the difference is between a goal and an intention? And so let's start with definitions. Gabriella, what do we mean when we say goals and what do we mean when we say intentions? Well, think of it as you're playing darts and you're shooting for that target in the middle. So that's your goal. The goal is the end result, right? But the intention is your aim. It's your mindset. It's your thought process, your motivation. Why do you want to hit that target? That's what we speak about when we speak about intention. Both can be very specific now. And that's also important. But in coaching, we talk about SMART goals, right? They're specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. So in other words, one of the common coaching goals for clients is I want to get in shape, or at least that's the general vision. I want to get in shape. It's like, okay, well, how do you want to do that? And as we continue to explore that question, I had a client not too long ago that said, okay, well, you know what? I like walking and I have a window of time at six o'clock in the morning to get up and do some walking before the house gets busy. So let me use that time to walk. Okay, great. How long do you want to walk? Because we want to get specific now. Okay, well, it's going to be 20 minutes. And what days of the week? Okay, well, you know, I'm going to do it on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Great. So now we have a SMART goal. And it's time bound, which is important. It gets in the schedule, right? 20 minutes, three times a week at six o'clock in the morning. Then what happens? It backfires. Why? <laughs> What if you miss a day? What if you oversleep? What if it rains, et cetera, et cetera? Any number of reasons. Oh, this is so easy. Why can't I get it done? I don't understand. It's not that big a deal. I used to do this 10 years ago. Then it can really kind of snowball into this self-critique, this negative self-talk, et cetera, et cetera. So a goal by itself, I think for some people, it works very effectively. People who are used to having those kinds of markers, they work very well with goals. Okay, well, three times a week, I'm on it. Got it. But for most people, it's just another item on the to-do list that keeps getting longer and it never gets done. And that can be an incredible source of frustration. So we want to set somebody up for success. And with that client, I started asking, well, what was your experience 10 years ago? What was it like? And in the end, really, the conversation wasn't about what you did, but it's about how did it feel? You know, how did your day go as you started at six o'clock walking, and did you notice a difference between the days when you went walking and the days that you didn't? What was that experience like? How did that impact the rest of your day? How did you feel at the end of the day when you got home from work, et cetera, et cetera? I mean, so we started kind of going through that exploratory coaching process and just really relating to an experience that she already had. And at the same time saying, well, what was good about it? What was memorable about it? Because that's where the intention comes from. Yes, 10 years forward. It may be a completely different plan, but at the same time, it's like, well, what's the intention? What are you going for? What makes it believable to you? So we want to get it from goal, I'm setting this goal because it's a good idea, to an intention. And so with this client, it said, my intention is to create me time in the morning because that's what I really want. Oh, so the goal is not about exercise at all. It's about creating me time. Now we're talking. And so once those kind of little light bulbs went after the other went off, we were able to kind of combine the goal with the intention of creating me time first thing in the morning so I can feel at peace as my day begins or I can feel energized before my day begins. You know, why are you doing what you're doing? And that's the intention. It speaks to your why and your goal speaks to how you're going to do it. And so now the walk was about creating an one means of many of creating me time. And then we started having these little moments throughout the day where she could do that. Well, okay, I have one of my patients just missed. Let me go and walk around the neighborhood and see some new sites. And there's another opportunity for me time. And it combines a little exercise at the same time, right? So we got to play with the idea and really expand the idea by giving it a little more teeth, a little more bite. 
making it more believable and more relevant to this particular person, as opposed to, I'm going to exercise because that's what I'm supposed to do. So the intention really kind of jazzes everything up and it lends a certain excitement to the goal more than just the goal by itself. Does that make sense, Jill? A hundred percent. I love it. I think you spoke to something important, right? Which is the people who say, I set goals and then I don't achieve it. And then I have the self-loathing and I beat myself up. It's very demotivating and I'm either on the wagon or off the wagon of getting done or achieving what I want to achieve. And then there's the people that actually always do achieve their goals, right? They're checking off the list. Their chief in their division, as I have a client that did that, it's like, here's where we want to be in terms of revenue. And all those goals were getting checked. And then this client is saying to me, so why is it that I feel so eh and uninterested and I'm burning out even when I'm reaching all the goals? And I think goals in and of themselves, the target is not where the meaning comes from. It's not where the richness comes from. And so if we're not careful and we just do the extrinsic goals, just the markers, just the check off the list things, just the meeting the department goals (laughs) for this particular physician I'm talking about, over time, we may still achieve them, but we're getting less motivated. We're getting less meaning out of it. And we know that burnout research tells us that physicians who have more connection to why their work matters burn out less, or it's a way to treat burnout is to be able to connect to why your work matters. And so to me, the intention is getting connected to why your work matters, right? That's that. And there's been some other research that was done of military academy graduates from a number of years ago. And I'll just summarize it that said that people that had extrinsic only goals, right? What rank I want to be, what weight I want to be, what my marital status is, were actually far less successful. And that was measured by whether they got to those goals than people that had more intrinsic goals. Like I want to be a leader, right? There's the intention to lead. (laughs) I want to be somebody who is great at handling obstacles and challenging and stays calm in those times. Those more intrinsic or intentions that people set and then balance that with a way to get there, right? That was measurable and achievable and not just pie in the sky. Oh, I have this intention, but I'm never going to do it. That's where it seemed like the magic happened. What do you think about that? I agree hundred percent because yeah, you're looking for that magic, especially that motivation, especially when days are tough, when days are long, when you are tired, when you need to kind of reconnect with why this is important to you. It becomes super important to have that intention. And oftentimes with myself and with my clients. And, you know, I'll set my intentions first before necessarily looking for the goal. And it could be anything. It could be something simple. Well, my intention for my day off is, well, my intention for my day off is to have fun. Okay, great. Now I get to create a plan. What does that look like exactly? You know, maybe it's going to get a softy ice cream. Maybe I call up a friend and hang out for coffee. We haven't hung out since before the pandemic. Now we get a chance to do that, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, It could be something simple like that. My intention for, name a topic, is to, what's the feeling? You want to feel reconnected, reinvigorated. What are you going for? And this is how I get to create that intention. Because again, we don't want to get lost in the to-do list. We want to get lost in the magic, right? And we want to create that magic. And it could be something as elaborate as a project, as a 10-year plan for your life. What is your intention? What would you like to experience in life? How do you want to feel about your life 10 years from now? I mean, the intention could be your next patient encounter, or it can be your long-term vision. It could be about your date night with your spouse, or it could be about your new job starting, you know, six months from now. What's your intention for this new position or your new promotion? It could be so many different things. Just choose a topic, any topic, but go for how you want to feel about it and then start looking at your goals. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You can start with goals and then go to set your intention. That's fine. I tend to go the other way around simply because it's like, give me a reason why I'm doing this. Why is this significant for me? Because personally, I'm not terribly extrinsically driven individual. If I don't have that intrinsic drive that this matters to me for a reason, then every goal in the world is not going to make a difference. But if it is meaningful, if I can find meaning for it for me, that I can have an impact on somebody else's life, that I can be of service, you know, what is the meaning in here for me, then yes, then the goals make more sense or setting goals make more sense. 
I had a really cool conversation in a coaching session with a just dynamic, incredible young surgeon. And she was noticing that the thing that used to drive her in terms of extrinsic goals, which is always being the A plus student (laughs) as she was leaving residency and moving into her career just wasn't working anymore because that target was gone, right? There really wasn't anybody giving her grades anymore. And she was trying to, in some way, get her colleagues or supervisors to become her professors and grade her work. And that wasn't a role that they were really supposed to be in, in that colleague situation. And so the target kept moving. You know, one person would want this, one person would want that. And so when she realized, aha, in our conversations, when I was just asking her what she really thought she wanted, she was like, oh my gosh, I want grades and I don't really need grades anymore. And I was getting really burnt out on grades. (laughs) And so maybe now it's time for me to think about this a little differently. What matters to me? How can I help make that stuff where I shine, where my skills and mastery and talent and innate abilities and the stuff that comes as naturally as breathing and the stuff that was hard for me that I've gotten good at, How do I put those together in my practice in a way that just isn't looking for somebody else's gold stars, grades, or pats on the back, which I'm not getting often because they're really tired and busy and their goal in life is not to sit around and give me grades and pats on the back. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, the focus shifts over time. And as a physician grows up in the career path, it isn't about grades anymore. And it is about that personal meaning. And so I think you bring up a really, really important point. So yeah, I think that again, just follow a two-step, three-step formula for setting an intention. What I recommend to my clients is try it on, really start with the simple stuff and see what impact you experience from that. Because again, we remember that, is it the target that I'm looking at or is it how I'm throwing the arrow? You want to be able to determine how you throw the arrow and you get to make that decision even before you walk into a meeting, walk into a patient encounter, walk into a conversation with your loved one. Whatever it is that you're intending, you get to set that before you start, because that speaks to your frame of mind, how you want to show up for it, right? And you get to make that determination. You get to choose. So let's say the outcome is not exactly what you thought it would be. You know, one of the favorite scenarios for primary care docs is, what do I do about this difficult patient? Oh, Lord, this person's on my schedule again. And believe me, I've seen and heard, and I've been in that situation so many times, But imagine being able to say, well, my intention is to feel good about this client visit. It can really be as simple as that, right? And say, okay, well, how am I going to create that for myself and create that for our interaction? Well, I'm going to feel good because this time I'm going to ask a different kind of question. Okay, great. So now I have an action step that I'm going to take in order to change the dynamic of that relationship with that particular patient, for example. I mean, you can set an intention before And as you finish that interaction, you understand that even if that person, let's say it's this particular patient, doesn't change their habits at all, right? It still does the same thing they've always done. The intention, most importantly, is about you. It's not dependent on what other people think or feel. And so I think that's the difference there. When you're looking at extrinsic goals, you're dependent on other people's validation. But with an intention, you're not. You're speaking to your motivation and your feelings of fulfillment. And whether another person reacts a certain way or not is irrelevant. You do it for you. And so that is probably the last point I want to bring up because it's like, so what if the situation doesn't change? But you know you went into an encounter with a particular energy in mind, if you will. Yeah, I love that. I used to have a thing that I would put on my computer and it would say, in this situation, I want to feel blank so I can be blank. So in this courageous conversation with my chief of my division. I want to be honest and have integrity and confident so I can be closest to my true self to show up instead of, you know, a people pleasing person who's all spinning their wheels. (laughs) So it's, I think just setting that intention around the feeling state, as you said, to help you show up the most authentically that you can be in a situation is just a really good way to set yourself up for success. So That, my friends, is what we're talking about when we say goals and intentions. And we hope that the sort of nuanced way of looking at it gives you some new ideas and invigorates and motivates you to think about what matters to you because what you're doing in the world does matter. I know sometimes it feels like you're in a vacuum or on a hamster wheel, but you're making a difference by being out there as medical professionals in a way that is serving people that's really unique to you. And we appreciate it. 
And we also appreciate it if you heard something that you liked today. Please share this podcast with colleagues, with friends, with other people that you know in the medical profession and other physicians. Take a minute, give us a five star rating if you would on whatever platform you listen to us on. It really helps us be able to get this message out to other people who can find it helpful as well. So that's our tiny little ask of you today. But mostly we just want you to know that we appreciate you. We appreciate the work you do in the world. And we are really glad to be part of this conversation with you. If you haven't headed over recently to docworking.com, make sure you sign up so that you're getting information from us about resources and offerings that we have specifically for physicians to help you in medicine and in life. Until next time, we'll see you on Doc Working, the whole physician podcast. I'm Jill Farmer. And thank you, Gabriella Dennery, MD, for all your great ideas today as well. Hello, and thank you for listening. This is Amanda Taran. I'm the producer of the Doc Working Podcast. If you enjoyed our podcast, please like and subscribe. We would also love it if you checked out our website, which is docworking.com. And you can also find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. On Instagram, we are docworking1, and that is with the number 1. When you check us out on social, please let us know what you would like to hear on the podcast. Your feedback really means a lot to us. And if you're a physician with a story you'd like to tell, please reach out to me at amanda at docworking.com to apply to be on the podcast. Thank you again, and we look forward to talking with you on the next episode of Doc Working, the Whole Physician Podcast.